evaluating research notes. What we're going to do today is we're going to look back at our notes either on paper or in the Google Excel sheets and we're going to kind of evaluate what we've done so far. I've told you before that research is an ongoing process. Uh, there is always opportunities to go back and find more research if you find that you have a weakness in a specific area or if you get to your presentations and you realize there's a slide that might benefit from having some ethos or a quote from an expert of some sort. So I'm going to show you how to start that process today. The first thing we're going to think about and look at is this idea. Are there any key ideas or big ideas that need to be renamed on your chart? So let's take a look at a chart. So here are my notes on the Karen Beasley Sea Turtle Rescue. We're going to take a look at this section of the notes as this is kind of the core of our research. And we're going to go over here to the key idea column first. If you go to the top and you click on that G box and you right click, it will bring up this extra uh, kind of toolbar. And you can click where it says sort to A to Z down here. And what that's going to do is that's going to arrange all of your key ideas in alphabetical order so that it kind of clumps similar key ideas together. So you'll see all of the notes that I have on how sea turtles could possibly be dangerous to humans are here. All of my key ideas on the human impact are down here. I have two on the importance of sea turtles and I have uh, a bunch more down here on different key ideas or big ideas. So this does a few things for you. The first thing it does or what I want you to do is I want you to go through and look at all your key ideas and first decide do you have any key ideas that just have uh, one or two notes for them. If you do, is it possible that you could rename them to fall underneath one of your other key ideas? Is it possible that you have two key ideas that are kind of similar, they cover similar topics, so you could combine those underneath one key idea? If you have questions about that, you can come ask. The second thing that we're going to take a look at is this question right here. Which key ideas or big ideas are my weaknesses and which ones are my strengths? So looking back at my chart, it is easy to see now that I have them organized alphabetically, which areas do I have weaknesses in and which ones do I have strengths. Obviously for me I only have two notes on the danger to humans and they don't fit in any other categories or big idea groups so this is a weakness for me. I don't have a lot of information so it either tells me that I need to go back out and do some more research to find some more reasons. Perhaps there aren't any more reasons so then that means that this might not be something that I'm going to have as a main focal point for my uh, social calls project, my presentation, my paper. Then the next thing I have on here is human impact and you'll notice I have a lot. I think I counted it somewhere between 17 to 19 uh, different ways that humans are impacting turtles. And as I started to read through some of these, I started to realize that there were kind of two ways that humans were impacting turtles. And this might be something that you're going to need to do with your research. If you find that you have a key idea that has a lot of information in it, you can go back through and see if you can kind of group it into smaller things smaller key ideas. So what I decided after reading through some of these is that there were some accidental ways that humans were impacting turtles. For instance, this says uncontrolled coastal development, vehicle traffic on beach, deep beaches and other human activities have directly destroyed or disturbed sea turtle nesting beaches around the world. So without even knowing it, we're just developing land, creating places for people to go and enjoy for vacations and things. Without even know it, we are accidentally impacting uh, the habitat of the turtles and causing them to further become endangered. So there are some other examples down here that are accidental uh, impacts that humans have on turtles. But there are also some that are purposeful. For instance, this first one up here, says slaughtered for their eggs, meat, skin, and shells, sea turtles suffer from poaching and overexploitation. So <clears throat> this is purposeful. They're going out, they are killing the sea turtles and selling them for uh, parts of their shells, for their meat. So that's purposeful. We're going out of our way to hurt the turtles. So I have kind of then added an extra category over here because I had so much information on human impact to reorganize them a little bit. You'll see if we go down a little further, 
I have two more details on the importance of sea turtles. So again, I might want to go out and find some more information backing that up because that might be something I definitely want to include in my presentation. So really what this does is it shows you where your weaknesses are in your research and where your strengths are uh, in your research. So you kind of have an idea of what you need to do more with in terms of going out and researching and which key ideas you definitely need to be looking for and which ones you have plenty of information with or perhaps have so much that you need to kind of reorganize like I did with the accidental versus purposeful impact of humans. So then, as I already mentioned, the last thing we're going to look at is do I need to continue researching? Are there areas in my note taking, either on paper or in the Google Excel sheet, that perhaps are weaknesses for you? You don't have a lot of notes on, so you need to go back out and do a little bit more research on. Good luck and have fun.